Right, so we're off to Dorset to go and do some mountain biking, some walking bike, walk, walking biking, some mountain biking, some walking, and more importantly, some landscape photography. Uh, we're going to be camping down there. We've loaded the car up. We're going to head off now. We're going to take a nice meander down and see if there's anywhere on the way. And we're going to take you guys along with us. Okay, so here I am at Doodle Door. It's about six o'clock in the morning. Um, the sun's just coming up. Uh, I'm filming on my iPhone because my GoPro's, GoPro has gone flat. Um, here's Doodle Door there. So, I w there's a lot of photographers up the hill behind me, but I've sort of moved down because I didn't, didn't quite like it up there. The sky is awful, but I'm gonna do some long exposures of this scene. And we'll see how it goes. I'm at F6.3, and I'm using the live time feature on the EM5 Mark II to see the exposure come up and build, so I know when to stop the exposure. I think I'm about 30 seconds at the moment. A um, little bit about the setup. I've got the 7 to 14 millimeter f2.8. As I said before, I'm at f6.3. I have a 10 stop uh, neutral density filter on, like Nissi neutral density filter. And I have a 0.9 uh, soft edge graduated filter. Um, and I'm focused just down just on the grass about a third of the way into the scene you can see the photographers up behind me when walking towards me and then some more on the rocks so let's shoot some more So I've moved down even further towards the, the actual Doodle Door Rock now and it's a really nice view. The sun's just coming up behind me now and it's making some nice colours. There's not, hardly any cloud in the sky. But also, we've now got it starting to light the land behind me. So I'm now going to go down onto the beach and see if I can shoot quite close up to the door because the sea is moving a lot today. So I'm going to do a shot here, and then I'm going to move down. Right, so I've come right down on the front now. Here's the door. And I'm right down at the water's edge. And a few other photographers on the beach now. The light's starting to come on the hills over there. It shouldn't be too long before the light comes on the actual doodle door itself. Here. So, no idea if the tide's going in or out. Should have checked. So I'm now going to wrap a few off here. It's got pretty much the same settings, but to get look in the sea. I've still got the 10 stop filter on, which is probably a little bit too much, but I'm at ISO 800 and I'm at 8 second exposure. Um, I'd probably like to go a bit shorter, but I'll try that shortly. Um, still got the 7 to 14 on to get this whole vista on there. And uh, so this is what it looks like on the screen. And so let's shoot a few like this. So this is incredibly difficult because the spray is just making the fil filters filthy all the time. I keep having to clean them off and it's really, really difficult, but the light's coming nice now. So hopefully I can get a great shot. Oops. 
spray is ridiculous. So I've taken the camera off, cleaned it up, and I'm just waiting for this light. The light's just coming on the top of here. It's not very well exposed. The light's over there. I'm just gonna wait for it to come more on the top of here. I've got the tripod. I've got the tripod set up ready. And as soon as the light comes good, I'm ponking the camera down. I'm gonna do a long exposure of about eight seconds, and that'll be it. Okay, so I've moved along now, and I'm looking down the beach. I've got this seaweed in front of me. The light is getting beautiful, but the sky is a bit rubbish. But I'm nice and low down. Uh, I've got exactly the same filters on still. The light on the beach is here. I've got this seaweed in front of me. And I've got the door across the way there. And I'm just shooting every time that the sea comes in the right amount and is receding. The key thing to do when you're trying to shoot the water moving is to shoot when it recedes. So here it comes in and then bang, shoot when it recedes. Well, that's it. Getting pretty busy down there now. But I think we got some good stuff. It was really nice, really nice morning. Um, sorry about the, the phone footage, but uh, whew, a bit tired going up these stairs now. <laughs> Been squatting down, so my legs are hurting. Anyway, uh, go back, have some breakfast, go for a bike ride, and explore Dorset. Good morning. Right. Well, it's Sunday morning. Uh, I wasn't completely happy with what I got yesterday down at Doodle Door. So I've laid in the tent this morning and uh, listened to the weather. Didn't sound like it was raining. Checked out the weather app. Didn't want to look out the tent because uh, I'd have to disturb the person who's next to me. So, had a look at... Um, I had a look at the weather app. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a bit of cloud around, but a bit of sun. So I'm heading out. It's about 20 to 6. Sunrise is in uh, 25 minutes. Behind me, you can hopefully see that it's the exposure's not great on this iPhone, but it's starting to look a bit red behind me, which is great. Um, it's to my left where I will be facing, and there are clouds in the sky, but there is also sky visible. So it's looking better at the moment than yesterday. That sky should hopefully get a bit red around to my left. Um, and as I shoot over Doodle Door, um, hopefully we'll get some red sky, some red clouds, and a bit of a good scene. Uh, I'll use the same setup as yesterday. I'll go on top of the cliff, looking across to the uh, east, um, uh, southeast, and uh, I'll use a 7 to 14 lens. I'll have a soft edge neutral, uh, a soft edge graduated neutral density filter on there either 0.6 or 0.9 I should imagine uh, probably 0.9 because it will probably be fairly well it will be fairly dark down on the sea and so on won't be much light down there for a while and uh, and we'll see how it goes okay already this is so much better than yesterday the sky has got more interest what's really interesting is I'm the only one here this morning yesterday morning up on the rocks behind me, up on the, up, up behind me, there was about five, ten photographers. There's no one here this morning. There's some people just along the beach who've looked like camped overnight. Um, 
and there's a guy cleaning the beach, picking up litter. That's it. No one else here. It's Sunday morning. I'm on my own. Which means, of course, I've got the pick of the spots. Because uh, I'm shooting so wide, I've picked a spot very, pretty close. And uh, it's looking really nice. So, uh, I've actually got a hard edge. Because, because of where I'm stood, I've pretty much got the sea horizon. I'm just going to rattle off another shot. Um, I've pretty much got the sea, uh, the, the horizon. There's a tiny bit of the rock poking over it, and there's a tiny bit of rock over to my left. But essentially, I've got the horizon. The cloud is making a lovely shape going into the, um, the sunrise, uh, into the red sky. Because I've got that flat, that the actual d definite horizon, I've gone for a hard-edged 0.9. Uh, graduated neutral density filter. At the moment, I'm at f11, and that's giving me two seconds. It was giving me two and a half seconds when I started. It's giving me two seconds of exposure. So I'm just going with that at the moment, but then I'm going to do a long exposure shortly. But the clouds are such a great shape, they almost look long exposure anyway. Um, and the only other thing I've done is I've is I normally shoot auto white balance, but today I've changed my white balance to shadow. And it's just making it a bit more realistic, slightly less blue, um, which is what I want. Uh, real, more realistic is probably not the right word. Slightly less blue, um, and uh, to, to my mind, it looks better. But I can change that in post, whatever. So I'm just going to stay here and carry on shooting. I'm going to put the um, tent stopper in in a minute and do some long exposures. So, I've got one I'm happy with. <clears throat> I've got a couple that I'm happy with. A long exposure, about three and a half minutes, and just a sort of two and a half second exposure. The difference being without the uh, big stopper um, with it. Uh, so, much better than yesterday. Another thing that's better than yesterday is the wind is not as strong. So, much better than yesterday morning. Uh, much happy with what I've got. So let's have a quick chat about composition. Um, this is, I was going to say this is all about leading lines. This is a lot about leading lines, this shot. It's also about rule of thirds. But I'm kind of covering all the bases. This is why it should be a good shot because it's obeying just about all the rules. Now, the rules, the sky's just getting better. I'm looking up there now. Um, rules are for breaking, of course, but if you stick to them, it's a pretty good start. And we have got the path leading in on my left here. We've got the, the, the beach and the sea leading in. We've got the edge of the cliff here leading in. We, and then, so there's all the leading lines leading in to the, the, the rock, the main focal point. That main focal point <coughs> is on a third, roughly on a third line on the right hand side. I've then got the horizon on the top third line. So we're sort of really hitting all the, all the stuff we need to hit to make this work. Um, let's do another exposure. Uh, I'm just going to have a little play with my filters but this so you know I'm hitting all the rules here and that's why this shot is working so well so let's have a quick chat about how I'm actually shooting these long exposures because at the moment I'm doing around a minute but I've been doing three minutes and the Olympus cameras this is the OMD EM5 Mark II they have this feature called live time and what this allows you to do is this allows you to see the exposure building on the screen with a live histogram and you choose how often it updates and it'll update 24 times sometimes less depending on various factors but essentially if you think it, it will update 24 times so you say how often you want it to update now I've got it on eight seconds 
I could actually knock it down to four now because I'm doing much shoot or even two. Uh, no, two would be pushing it, but I could knock it down to every four seconds, but I've got it every eight, which is still fine. And so you literally, you just need a rough idea of how long you're gonna expose for. You really need to just know, is it gonna be 30 seconds or is it gonna be six minutes? Yeah, just somewhere in the ballpark. So work that out, uh, which you can often do by just going to aperture mode, putting your setup on, picking your aperture, picking your ISO, and it will give you a rough idea of what the camera thinks it should expose for. So if it says a minute, well then you go back into live time, you choose your updates so that you'll get them for at least a minute and longer, and, and then you literally just set your aperture in manual mode. So you do this in manual mode. You go to manual mode, you set your ISO, you set your aperture, and then you literally just choose live time, click the shutter button and watch it update, and watch until you can see on the screen the image is properly exposed. So it's a fantastic feature on these Olympus cameras, and it's the, one of the main reasons I shoot Olympus. Um, the technology is superb. So I just, but I just thought I'd say a little bit about how I shoot these long exposures. Right, so I've moved now, I've moved over the other side to the bay, just the other side. Um, can't remember what it's called. Um, but this is quite an interesting shot. I've got these steps going down, but I can't control the light. For a start, I can't use a hard edge graduated filter because the rock's coming up either side, the cliff's coming up either side. So I'm using a soft edge and the sun's coming up right in front of me and I can't control it. So what I'm doing is taking two exposures. One is about four seconds and then I'm doing an exposure which is about four times that, so about 16 seconds for the land and the sea. And the idea is I will join them together in post. But it's a nice little scene going down, it's the steps leading down. I think it could be quite nice. I just saw it as I was walking down to this, to down here and thought I'll give it a go. So I've come right down to the water's edge now and uh, it's quite nice, I'm doing the same as before but the sun is just peeking over. So I'm just trying to get these with the sun just peeking over. And I'm doing, I'm just going to get this one. I'm doing exactly the same as I did up on the steps. Um, I'm going to combine two exposures. But it's just pretty nice down here. Well, I'm really happy with that. Um, so much better than yesterday morning. Everything about it was better. It was warmer, uh, it was less windy, it was less people, uh, there was better cloud, there was better color in the sky. Uh, everything was better. Um, I feel really sorry for the guys who were down here yesterday morning. Um, and weren't able to come back today. Uh, same with, I met a guy last night who traveled from Bath. Uh, and he just traveled down to try and shoot last night. And it was a bit of a letdown. Um, you know, I get another crack at it tonight uh, because I'm staying here. So yeah, that's worth doing. Um, but yeah, superb. There's two guys down there swimming in the sea it, I, it's just i don't know I've lost track of time but it must be about seven o'clock it was a nice morning but i mean phew. okay good luck to them uh i met them as i was climbing back up actually and i think um they were a little bit inebriated nice chaps but they fell down on the way down there or one of them did and now they're swimming in the sea and uh I don't know which is worse, being that drunk at seven o'clock in the morning or swimming in the sea. Anyway, good morning, great morning it was. Uh, really enjoyable and uh, it's a lovely quiet place when the tourists aren't around. So, onward and upward, 
Looks like a lovely day for mountain biking. Didn't get much yesterday when I was out. Um, see what we get today. Uh, Want to go for a ride? Right, so this is day three of my little Dorset trip. Uh, instead of cycling today, I'm still, still filming on the iPhone by the way, because I still can't get the GoPro working. Instead of cycling today, uh, I've taken a walk for long, from Doodle Door along to Lulworth Cove and then round there to a place called Mup Bay. Probably saying that wrong. Somebody will probably tell me it's Muppy Bay or something. So, and the rocks here are superb, but you can only get here by walking. And some of it is through the Lulworth firing range where they uh, test the tanks and so on. So I guess sometimes that's closed off. So anyway, these, these great rock formations here. The tide's out, which is superb. Um, and then these lovely rocks over here. So at the moment I've got the 12 to 100 on. Um, purely because there's this lovely water down here and I'm using the polarising filter which won't go on the 7 to 14 and won't work with ultra wide angle. I am going to put the 7 to 14 on in a minute. But what I'm doing is I want a quite long exposure to try and get a bit of movement in the clouds. So because it's sunny, this is a, a great little byproduct of the high res mode on the EM5 Mark II. So what I've done is I've got F8, so it's going to be nice and sharp. I'm at 12 mil and I've got a 10 stop uh, neutral density filter on and that's giving me five seconds but then I put it into high res mode where it combines eight shots so that's essentially giving me a high res shot 63 64 megapixels of 40 seconds so that's how I'm set up at the moment be interesting to see as always I'm shooting at daylight uh, if I'm shooting in daylight hours I'm always looking at going black and white very rarely will I keep it colour. But the polarizer is giving some real darkness to the sky and it's cutting out the reflections on this water just down here. And uh, so we'll rattle off a few, change to the 7 to 14 and see how it goes. So as I suggested, I was going to do, I've changed the lens to the 7 to 14. It gives quite a different perspective and it gets this rock, uh, this big rock like I mentioned before, in it quite a lot more and quite a lot easier. One thing that it does do though, is I'm still shooting in high res mode, but whereas I was at five seconds before, I'm now at two and a half seconds uh, exposure time. So that's two and a half times eight, so that's 20 seconds. Now, the reason for that is nothing to do with the lens reason for that is because the polarizer is not on there so it's just an interesting little thing I thought I'd mention is how much polarizer can increase and people don't often don't think about this with a polarizer that increased the, exp the exposure time for this shot by it doubled it just by having that on everything else apart from the, the width of the lens is exactly the same as it was before yeah I'm now on two and a half seconds where it was five seconds before so just a little interesting thing. I'm going to pack up now. I've got everything I want. I'm going to pack up now and wander back and have a little drink somewhere.